Hello everyone and uh, welcome to longrangeonly.com. I'm Jeff Brozovich and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to shoot a little video here to show you how to install the little pick rail to the front of your rifle stock so you'll be able to utilize the quick detach bipod mounts. So hang around, we'll go through the whole process and hopefully when I'm done uh, you'll know exactly what you need to do. So what we have here, this is a kit that we've assembled on Long Range Only that we sell in our Long Range Only store and uh, it, it is the Modular Evolution Bipod Kit. And the reason we call it a kit is we've added the necessary components to this and sell it as a package so you'll have everything you need to run these bipods the way we run them. It comes with your main bipod uh, uh, assembly here and your quick detach legs. Let's snap on like that. And we also include, for those of you who hunt in places with uh, terrain like Montana, a lot of gravel and that, we include a set of the bipod spikes. As you can see, they go on quick and easy and uh, allow you to you know, dig in and get a good grip. The other thing that this kit comes with is the pick rail that goes on the front of your stock. And that's what we're going to be dealing with today. We're going to go over how you get this installed on your stock on those stocks that only has one uh, sling swivel stud. So along with it comes the rail, the two uh, countersunk bolts, and the two T-nuts which would go inside the stock. Now, if your rifle has, already has the one, like most of them do, the one sling swivel stud, then you'll only have to install one of these. So that's what I'm going to do today is I'm going to install one of these and, uh, and we'll go over the full procedure here. So uh, let me get set up here a little bit and I'll zoom back in and show you what I'm doing. Before we get deep into this, let's go over everything you might need to uh, perform this task. Now I typically do this in a drill press, but I realize not everybody has a full shop and a drill press at home, so I'm going to do it today with just a cordless drill. A little bit more time steadying things up and just being real careful and not going too fast will, will give good results. You can get good results using the drill. So I got my cordless drill. I got three drill bits, one of them being a spade wood bit, and that's going to be used to reset these T nuts on the inside. I got a countersink to clean up any burrs, the Allen wrench to tighten the bolts, measuring device, I got a little steel rule here and a caliper that I'm going to use to help uh, center the rail up once I have it on the on the stock. So uh, anyway, so that we went over that. That's all you're going to need to do it. It, it doesn't take uh, any special tools, usually stuff a guy has around. So let's get on with the process. The first thing we're going to do, using my Allen wrench here, we're going to bust loose the uh, existing sling swivel stud and take it out of there. We're not going to use that anymore. The rail we sell with our kits does have a provision at the back so that you can hook a sling swivel on there. So if you still want to carry the rifle on a swivel, you'll be able, or on a sling, you'll be able to. So I'm just going to put this on there, put one of my bolts in. Run it down and just snug it up. So I can still move it a little bit, but uh, what I'm going to do is get, uh, get everything aligned here now. Now if that bolt would happen to be just a little bit too long, some of them will be and you feel it bottom now, you may have to take it over to the grinder and grind off a little bit and then put a little bevel on it. You know, you may have to shorten your bolt just a hair, but this one worked out today just fine. Then I'm going to take my steel rule and I'm going to kind of eyeball measure up on both sides and just see that I've got that running in a nice true straight line. You want it running straight to your stock. The other thing you could do is take a longer straight edge, run it down the side, and maybe make some pencil marks, get an idea. So the basic job we're doing here is just to get that all squared up and real straight and then snug it down so it doesn't move. So now we're ready to drill our extra hole. We're going to use the, the last uh, hole down here. I've chosen a drill bit to drill this that's ten thousandths or so larger than my screw. You just want something a little bit larger for the new screw so it doesn't bind up when you run your screw through. So I'm just going to start that right in there, drill slow, and 
and drill a hole all the way through the stock. There we have it, we got a hole all the way through. That's step one. So I went ahead and took my rail back off. We don't need it now. We have our two holes. There's our new hole we drilled right there. I'm going to roll the stock over and I can see where I protruded inside. And what I need is a register for this T-nut to set in. I need something for that to sink down in so it doesn't rubble my barrel. So the way I'm going to do that, so I'm going to use a spade bit, wood spade bit. I'm using a 7 8 here. These measure slightly over 3 quarter. I'm going to use one, I'm going to use a 7 8 so it's just a little bit bigger so that as this thing is centering up, it's got, when I had tightened it down, it's got room to move around a little and find its home and be nice and true. So I'm just going to, I've got a sandbag under the back of my stock. And like I said, I normally do it in a drill press, but we're going to do it this way today. I'm going to take my spade bit, get it started in that hole, and ever so carefully start making a register down into that stock. Don't go too fast or too far, they drill pretty quick. As you can see, we've got a pretty good register already. I just want enough to so that T-nut will set down below the surface. I'm going to give it just a little bit more. There's what I have right there. I've got a nice register, as you can see. And that's going to allow that T-nut to set down below the now, surface. Because this portion of our T-nut, the shank with the threads in it here, is a little bit larger diameter than our bolt, we're going to need to counterset a little recess from this side so that that'll set down in there because our hole that we originally drilled isn't big enough. So I've got a drill bit here, again, 10 or 15 thousandths bigger than this shank, and I'm just going to come in real slowly and just give me a little register there. Now these T-nuts have some pretty long spikes on them that are made to dig into like wood or things like that. I don't want them that deep in there. I just don't want them holding that much resistance. So I'm going to take a pair of Dykes side cutters here and cut those off. I'm going to cut all three of them off. So it'll still leave a little bit of them to grip into the stock but it's not going to hold up so far that it's going to cause me problems with uh, not pulling down all the way. I'm going to test fit my T-nut. It fits in there just fine. And that's what we were after. We wanted it down below the surface so it doesn't touch the barrel. And we got room. And now we're going to epoxy it in place. And I'll show you how to do that. So we, before we do our final step, which will be epoxy that T-nut in on the back side here, I decided to do a, a trial fit and make sure everything was going to be like we wanted it, and it's a good thing I did because I found out that I didn't have my T-nut quite low enough. I wasn't getting full thread engagement through my T-nut from my bolt, so tr always trial fit before you go gluing. That way, if you need to do like I did, I had to go back and just recess that T-nut down just a little deeper to get the threads like I wanted them. So we've got our trial fit. Everything's looking good. Now I'll pull it back apart and show you where I put a little bit of epoxy so that nut won't fall out if we ever take the rail off. That way we don't have to worry. We can take the rail off with the rifle together and be able to put it back on without worrying about that nut falling loose inside. Well, the battery went dead on my lapel mic, so we lost all the audio on this segment, and I'm having to shoot it a second time. So if it looks like I already have it done, that's because I already have it done. But I'm going to go back over the procedure with you. This time you'll be able to hear what I'm saying. So I mixed up a little bit of JB Weld Quick. Uh, any kind of epoxy will work. I use JB Weld quick and it, uh, it dries pretty quick and I can put things back together sooner. A little bit of that and I just applied it to the back of the T-nut in between the spikes a little bit all the way around. Then I drop my T-nut in, hold it with my finger in place while I start the back bolt into our new T-nut. Run it down there a little bit. Don't tighten it. Get the front one started. Now 
And as you tighten these down, remember the back one, you're going to have to bear on it just a little bit because we're pulling those teeth from that T-nut into the stock. Snug it up. Snug up this one. And then when you look inside, you should be able to see a little bit of epoxy squeezed out all the way around your T-nut. And all that's going to do is hold that thing from falling out. It doesn't really have any structural strength other than just to hold our T-nut in place so we don't lose it in the event that we pull our bipod with the rifle together. So there you have it. It's all on. Got the quick detached uh, rail mounted bipod. I can take it off just that quick. Put it back on just about as quick. There you go. Save your sling swivel stud that you took out of there. In the event, for any reason, you'd ever want to take this off to put it on another rifle or anything like that, you can buy an extra one of these. You can put them both in there, and you'll fill the holes, and you'll have the double sling swivel thing um, like some guns come with, and that way you can go back and forth. So that's all I have on that. I hope this helped you out. I hope to... Hope I uh, covered everything there. It's a pretty easy installation. The only thing I want to stress on is don't get in a hurry. When you're going in with them drill bits into these composite stocks, you don't need hardly any pressure. They'll cut almost on their own. So just go at them slow speed and easy. Or like I said, if you've got a drill press, it makes it a lot easier to go that route. Just chuck your stock up in your drill press uh, vise uh, with a little cloth around it or something so you don't scratch it. And just come in with your drill press and it makes those plunge cuts a lot easier. So. Hope that helps. Jeff Brozovich from Long Range Only uh, saying good day to you. If you like this uh, review, go ahead and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. There'll be more of them coming. Uh, follow us on Instagram and Facebook and come on over to longrangeonly.com. We're doing stuff like this all the time and uh, we're glad to share what we do with everyone out there. So hope to see you again soon.